Hey everyone, it's Vintage Vinny, and welcome to another antique store haul. Everything we're going to be looking at today came from one of my favorite indoor flea market slash antique stores. It's literally probably not even 25 minutes down the road, maybe a little bit less. In a smaller little Pennsylvania town, I love going to this place, and I find really good stuff. So I spent $72.29 on everything I'm going to be sharing with you all from the first place that I visited. So let's go ahead and get started. So I found this Victorian trade card. I really like it. It says, I like Scott's emulsion. It is just as nice as cream. And that consisted of cod liver oil and hypophosphites of lime and soda. So that's really interesting, and I love these old Victorian trade cards because there are so many of them out there, and you can find them and start collecting them because they're really, really cool. I also found this fish patch, which I thought was really neat. You guys know me and my nautical-themed stuff, so this may go into a junk jar. Not sure if it was a Boy Scout patch or what kind of a patch it is exactly, but I liked it a lot, so I went ahead and picked it up. I did find this bright green and neon highlighter yellow um, enamel flower brooch. I have a very fa fun fascination with these pieces. I don't know why. I just like the bright colors, and that's very 1970s. Love it. I found these in a booth that were 50% off, and they are whistles of different figures. Let me go ahead and take them out of the bag so you guys can see them. Some of these characters you may have to let me know who they are in the comments section because I really have no idea. This looks like a... almost looks like a devil, but it's, again, it's probably some Disney character. It says... Ooh, what does that say? Is that just a star? No, Hong Kong. So we got this guy. I recognize Donald Duck. I got Donald Duck in orange and I think I have him in red. Yep, red and orange Donald. Uh, here's another one of those alien-looking dudes. Yeah, Hong Kong. This looks like a knight of some sort, a knight in shining armor. And then it looks like we have a cat. Maybe these are the aristocrats, maybe? Got them in yellow and orange. Of course, we've got Mickey in red. And then we have another funny looking dude. Looks like another knight. So those were very, very interesting. And again, those were 50% off. So I went ahead and picked those up. So you all know that Katie and I do that industrial sale once a month. Uh, we haven't picked the date yet because Katie was in Vegas to celebrate uh, Jamie Mid-Century Wasted's birthday. So we haven't been in contact yet to figure out when that will be, but it is still the beginning of April, so it should happen at some time. So I picked up this really awesome Kentucky Club pocket pipe and cigar tobacco tin. That was a really good price, and I think somebody is going to absolutely love that. If you all see something in one of my haul videos and I say it's for sale and you're interested, you can email me ahead of the sale and I will put it aside for you if you agree with the price that I quote. Uh, my email is down below in the description box, skullking95680 at yahoo.com. This guy I just bought because I really liked him, and it's almost like a blow mold, but it's like a little container, probably filled with chocolate eggs or something at one point. I looked this up right when I spotted him, and he goes for about $30. I got them for five bucks, but because I do have some vintage Easter pieces and I don't have this, I will be keeping him or her, and, and I have a bunny, so you guys know. These I actually got 30% off, and based on my research, I think they are made by Rainbow Studio. They are hand-blown, a really nice shade of yellow, and they have like the spatter wear. Yes, I said it correctly. I always remember what I was taught in my forensic files science class. Forensic science class. <laughs> Paint spatters, blood splatters. So these have like a nice white spatter wear on them. So I'll probably sell those as a set because they do go together. 
I also found a Lefton graduation girl. If I had to guess a date, probably the 60s. It says Lefton Japan. So that will probably be up for grabs. Maybe I'll sell her closer to graduation season. I spotted this noisemaker and I liked the fact that it had the orange, black, and the green because that's definitely a clear indication of Halloween. It does have a mark right here, just says Made in USA. So that was a really good price and you know it's an older one because the handle is wooden, not plastic. I also found this adorable inflatable mousy. I have no idea who it is. Um, he's made in Taiwan, so he's probably from the 70s or maybe even the early 80s, but I just thought he was super cute and I couldn't resist that face. So he came home with me. This piece stumps me a little bit. It is crackle glass, as you can see, but it looks like it's a more like a more modern piece of crackle glass, like a like maybe party light or something. That was the vibe I was getting from it. No cracks or chips. I just really liked it. I thought it would be great for a coastal themed room, maybe for the bathroom or something. And what I really liked about it is I put my little uh, puck light in there. And let me show you all what it looks like lit up. How nice does that look? And I got it even cheaper than what the price tag said. So that I absolutely love. Again, I have no idea who makes it. I'm getting party light vibes, but... I absolutely love it. I mean, just look how nice that looks with a puck light in it. I also picked up a couple of hanky sets. This one's really neat. It even has a little bottle of perfume in it. I tried to look up that name, but I couldn't find it. Candlelight Perfume by Ed Cord. And it has the original packaging. The hankies look, don't look used at all. So that was definitely a neat find. And then we've got this one. This one definitely has Easter colors in it. The yellow, the pink, and the blue. And there are three of them in there. So I think it's the yellow, the blue, and then that's another one right there. Doi, that counts three. Clearly I don't know what I'm talking about sometimes. So I apologize for the way that I have these placed on the table. Uh, there wasn't really a way for me to prop them up without them sliding down. But these are some, I would say, 1960s Hollywood Regency wall sconces. They have kind of like a melon or pumpkin-shaped globe. As you can see, they do have some markings on them. I think a magic erasure, erasure, eraser should clean those up no problem. I got them for a really good price. I have, I think, maybe one set of sconces on eBay already. These would fit in fantastically with farmhouse. You could put it in shabby chic if you wanted to. And look at the Underwriter Laboratories sticker on the back, and that is not in focus. There we go. There isn't a zip code on here, so that's before 1963. So these could be very early 60s or maybe late 50s. So I definitely felt that those were worth picking up for the price. And I think I will be listing those on eBay. Get them cleaned up and then list them. I'm not sure what I'll be asking for them just yet, but we'll see. Alrighty, in the second place that I visited, uh, I spent $47.69, so let's go ahead and check it out. I did find another one of those travel alarm clocks. Sorry for the blurriness. There we go. It was made by Heco in Germany, and it does have a glow. Probably not showing too well, but it does fluoresce. The hands do. So that's in like a pleather holder. And it just folds back up nicely into its box, just like that. I did find another one of those Scotty Dog creamers that was given out in Post Nut Grape Cereal. And I actually have sold a few of these and I decided to get one for myself because why not? 
I did find a brand new old stock package of Evening in Paris talcum powder and perfume. If I had to guess the era of this, probably the 60s, maybe the 50s or 60s. And I think this set goes for about, I think when I looked it up last, it was, or when I looked it up in the store, it was about 25 maybe to $30. So that was a good pickup. I did get a set of brass bookends in the shape of a house, like an old house maybe from the 30s. They are brass, like I said, and it says Seville Studios. So those were a very good price, so I had to pick those up. This I'll probably end up putting in an industrial sale. This is a really cool tin. It says, the early view of the Brooklyn Bridge. Somewhat of a heavy-duty tin. I just thought that that was really interesting. Never seen anything quite like it, so I had to pick it up. And of course, every show needs a fairy lamp. So I did spot this one, and I saw it there the last time, and the booth was not running a sale. And this time around, it was on sale, so I got this 50% off the original price. And it is a nice, like, almost Coca-Cola colored green. So it would be a fantastic item for spring. I can't remember who makes this. Maybe it's Tiara? I could be very wrong, but I've sold this in pink before. So green, I think, is a great one for springtime. You can transition it right into summer for coastal. When I spotted this adorable celluloid turtle rattle, I just couldn't leave him behind. You guys know I have a coastal theme. And he still rattles, and he's in really good condition for his age. So squishy, as we call them in our house, had to come home with me. Set you right up there. This was really cool. This is an old child's collapsible cup. Collapses like that and you just pull it back up and you can drink a beverage out of here. It's made of like a cast aluminum, so it's very thin metal, but I love the nautical theme of it. So I went ahead and picked that up. This I was actually very excited about. This is a Hoosier jar uh, for coffee. Oh, let me try to take the lid off. There is a flaw. Hold on, let me just take get off camera real quick and then I'll open this up. So as you can see, I understood now why the price was what it was. Um, it was $4.99, which was a steal of a deal. But there is a chip right here. Now, uh, the uh, people at the front desk did talk me into purchasing it because if somebody were to purchase this from me, the damage is underneath the lid, and the lid still functions just fine, and you're not even going to see it. Of course, I am going to clean it up, because it's kind of dirty. But if the damage had been, like, maybe on the front of the jar, or something like that, or you couldn't get the lid on, more than likely I would have passed on it. But, like I said, I would normally never buy anything with that kind of damage, but because it's hidden underneath the lid and will only be seen when you take the lid off, I still felt that that was worth picking up. Maybe it wouldn't have been worth it to you guys, but sometimes there are exceptions to the rule, especially with this glass being from the early 1900s. And the last place that I visited was someplace I'd never been to before. Um, I had just was looking for new places to go, and um, aside from the two places that I like to go to already, and I found them. And I spent a grand total of $56.20 on everything you're going to be looking at in this last segment of this haul. So I got this awesome Bromwell's flower sifter in really good condition. I apologize, that glare is really making it difficult to see. But I mean, it's really clean. I mean, it definitely can still be used if you wanted to use it in present day. So I had to pick that up. That was a really good price. This is just a fun naughty novelty in the original box. I thought it was funny. It's from the 60s, I think, 60s or 70s. Almost like Weepy the Wee Wee, but it's called Wee Willie, and it's a water gun, and the water comes out of his manhood. So that's just a fun novelty item. That'd be cool to put out at springtime. I found one of those bendable bunny rabbit toys 
Uh, marked Hong Kong, I believe. I just don't remember where it says that. But yeah, he's cool. Pink. I found a little Hong Kong Easter basket. Plastic. I thought that was really cute. Look at how 1960s this owl bank is. Holy moly, look at those colors. I assume you probably pop the bottom off here and that's how you get all your money. But look at those colors. That just screams 1960s or 60s or 70s. Now you guys know me in York, Maine. I found a shot glass with nubble light on it. And it was made by Libby. It's probably, it's more than likely a newer piece. But anytime I see stuff with nubble light on it, I usually like to pick it up if it's inexpensive enough. And this was. So that's not too old. I found this thermometer. And I can't, I think the, this is lucite or something or plastic, not glass. But I could be very wrong about that. Needs a good cleaning. And it looks like it's a flange thermometer because you screw it onto something and you can turn it whichever way you want so it's facing the right direction. It says made in the U.S. I need to do a little bit more research because I know sometimes these things can do really well online and sometimes they might just do well in a live sale. We shall see. I spotted this angel here and she's super adorable. She's for June. She's reminiscent of Gobel, but she is not. She's made in Japan. It's called Alpine Angels of the Month. No breaks or anything. I'm quite amazed, but I think that would be great in a spring sale. Now, I got to give props to Alex of Chapter 2 Vintage Co. Because normally I would look past the Yankee Candles with the black and white stripe on it. But I spotted this one. Uh, uh, the, what was I going to say? The scent is called Bay Breeze. And I looked up this um, scent and one of the smaller ones, like, not not the big ones like this, but the smaller ounce. One of these candles, one sold for $27.95. So I think the next size down from this one sold for $27.95. So I might be able to get like maybe $50 or maybe even $55 for this, cam for this camera. For this candle. Lord help me. Sometimes these words just want to get jumbled up. And I know that there's a specific way to see when these candles were made. Maybe it's that little code right there. But I think I'm going to do very, very well with this candle. Maybe I'll list it for like 55 or maybe even 60 bucks and see what happens. It is unburned. Look at this set, you guys. Oh my goodness. Look at this luster set. You've got oil, vinegar, probably mustard, and then salt and pepper. Usually I find just the salt and pepper shakers, but I never find a complete set Cruets and everything. No cracks, no chips, just some minor paint loss. It is a made in Japan piece. That is just absolutely, absolutely amazing. And the price was right, so I had to have it. So there is one other thing that I'd like to share with you all. Just give me one second so I can get it for you. And the final item I would like to share with you all from this shopping trip is this epic mid-century barware set. It's gold, white, and black tumblers. I think these are made by Libby. And it's fruit. We've got grapes. We've got pears. It looks like we have lemons and raspberries. These are all in really good condition. Like, I don't see any dishwasher damage or anything. The gold, expect a little bit of wear to it, but I mean, just look at them. Aren't they just amazing? Now, I was considering just selling the glasses and keeping the caddy. And to keep a long story short, I recently subscribed to Disney Plus to watch some of my favorite Disney Channel shows from when I was younger. And I'm sure if you have kids or grandkids, you remember them talking about a show called That's So Raven. And in the very first season of the show, you can see a lot of really cool vintage props that they picked out for the Baxter's Kitchen. And one of the things that they had, if you're watching in the background, I think of the first few episodes of the first season, there is one of these caddies, and in it are the spaghetti tumblers, the rubber-coated spaghetti tumblers. 
and I really wanted the caddy for just those because I don't have any place to house them. So I haven't decided what I'm going to do just yet because even these tumblers look great in this caddy, but I really want a caddy for those tumblers, for the spaghetti ones. So I may just sell the glasses themselves. I don't know yet. I'm in a bit of a dilemma. So yeah, just let me know down below. What do you guys think? Because I, I mean, it does look good with these glasses in it, but I do want the spaghetti tumblers to go in here because I have the picture that matches it. So folks, that is everything that I would like to share with you all from my shopping trip in Pennsylvania. Let me know down below in the comment section what were your favorite items from this haul.